Welcome back. Let's talk about textures of metamorphic rocks because it's actually, once you look at a rock and you think you've determined it's metamorphic, the first thing we need to look at is the texture. And then we can start to classify and identify it. So there are some features that help us indicate that what we're looking at is probably a metamorphic rock. Some, the first thing is called uh, foliation, so caused by stress. So, excuse me, foliation is a planar arrangement of textural features in a metamorphic rocks. Fancy uh, way of saying it gives rocks kind of like a, a layered or banded appearance. So let's say we start off with what looks like a bunch of little mineral crystals. This looks like an igneous rock, say like what I have here as an example. Let's pretend this is an igneous rock made up of a bunch of different crystals of blue, purple, and pink minerals creating this igneous rock. So what we see here in the on the screen is, all right, well, I see white and black minerals, and when stress is applied, remember, heat and pressure, these minerals will kind of squish and elongate and form these kind of mineral bands, not unlike what's about to happen with, hello, me right here, right now. So let me take this igneous rock, all right, and if I start to apply some heat and pressure. Let me do that. Let me apply some heat and pressure. Things start to kind of line up. Things start to kind of line up, giving these kind of bands, like kind of like what we saw uh, over here. All right. So with heat and pressure, you know, these minerals are heating up. They're be able to be squished, and they're kind of squished, and they kind of elongate out, forming this kind of layered or banded appearance. And that's something called foliation. Foliation, which is an indicating texture of uh, metamorphic rocks. Another thing we might see, another common feature in metamorphic rocks are veins of material. So metamorphism is affected by the presence sometimes of open uh, fluid-filled spaces called pores. As pressure increases, you know, deeper you go down in, in earth, as pressure increases and this stuff is being squished, the pore space decreases and any fluid that's in there is slowly driven out, sometimes creating veins, kind of squirting out through these, through these rocks. And uh, for instance, like what you see here are a lot of quartz veins. So foliation and veins are, are very good indications of metamorphic rocks. So when we're looking at foliation, there are different types of foliated textures, and those include slaty cleavage, schistosity, mineral banding, and magmatic textures. So a slaty cleavage is kind of hard to pick out. Uh, whether it's a metamorphic or sometimes this, you know, sedimentary rocks can take on this look as well. But slaty cleavage is the parallel, parallel foliation or layering of very fine grain platy minerals in a direction perpendicular to the direction of maximum stress. Um, this is a very low grade metamorphism. Some types of metamorphic rocks that have slaty cleavage include slate, go figure, and another metamorphic rock called phyllite. So they develop kind of these what look like flaky flaky layers. So here's a, a slate outcrop and again you can kind of see the the, the layering to to that. Now the the parent rock of slate is typically shale which is a fine-grained uh, sedimentary rock that oftentimes also forms these kind of layers. So Sometimes slate and shale can kind of be confused. So you take shale, which is already kind of layered, and you apply some heat and pressure. You're altering a little bit, and it still has that layered look, and you get slate. And then you take slate, you apply a little more heat and pressure, and it becomes phyllite. Both have slaty cleavage. So again, slaty cleavage, you can kind of see it here, kind of this kind of layering almost, this layered look to it. Um, uh, so you can get, uh, again, cleavage, slaty cleavage develops perpendicular to the area of, or the direction of compression, direction of stress. For example, we got compression going this way, and that slaty cleavage is formed vertically. So those two things are perpendicular, nine, 90 degrees from one another. Um, a great 
uh, use of slate, things that have slaty cleavage, is um, in uh, old slate roofs. Typically in, in Europe, they would have slate roofs made of metamorphic rock slate because it's nice and flat. Um, also, in your fancier pool tables, the bottom of the pool table will be made of slate. It's, it can form nice, flat, natural, hard um, surfaces. Now, in less expensive pool tables, the, the, the playing surface is probably just wood as well as the other parts of it. But again, in nice, fancier pool tables, it's made of slate, which makes it so, so heavy. So again, you take a shale and you kind of metamorphose it a little bit and you can get slate. Um, you take slate and you metamorphose it a little bit, applying a little bit more heat, a little bit more pressure, you get phyllite. Phyllite also has slaty cleavage, but it's just a little bit more wavy, so it's not as flat as slate. Um, <clears throat> schistosity, so kind of a little bit more heat and pressure, and you get schistosity. So schistosity is kind of a medium to high grade metamorphism. It's again kind of a layering look due to the parallel arrangement of platy mineral grains, but such as muscovite and biotite, which gives it kind of this shiny appearance, this sparkly shiny appearance. Other minerals that may be present are typically quartz, garnet, which you see here, and a starlight, uh, which is was the crossed mineral we saw way back in, in that lab on minerals. And this is kind of a, an intermediate grade of metamorphism, usually medium to high grade. And a good type of uh, metamorphic rock that has schistosity would be schist. Go figure. These textures are kind of named after you know, the rocks, or the rocks are named after the textures, what have you. So here's an outcrop of schist. Again, you can kind of see the layered foliation. It's not the best picture, but uh, oftentimes schist has kind of a, a shiny, sparkly appearance because of how the planar arrangement of minerals like muscovite and biotite form, which are very kind of shiny minerals themselves. Then we get mineral banding, in, in which uh, it's a kind of a layering look in which bands of, uh, of lenses or granular minerals, quartzes and feldspar, the lighter colors, alternates with bands of lenses in which platy, muscovite, and biotite minerals predominate, and which are typically the darker ones. So you get these kind of layering bands look to it. And this is a high-grade metamorphism and a, a, a type, of igni or type of metamorphic rock that undergoes mineral banding or in high-grade metamorphism is nice. It's pronounced nice, G-N-E-I-S-S. Nice. So here are some nice outcrops, what they kind of look like. So again, you can kind of see the, these aren't layers anymore. This is kind of the minerals formed these kind of bands. It's not layers of rock, it's minerals forming these bands. And then as we continue to apply heat and pressure, we get something called a migmatic texture. Now, migmatic texture, we start to see these veins. So migmatic texture, it, is where you get kind of schistosity and mineral banding mixed with igneous textures uh, because you, you're you starting to leave the realm of metamorphism and entering the realm of igneous rocks. A little too much heat, a little too much pressure. The rock has not completely melted yet, but it's getting there. So we're any, any more and this whole thing would be melted and we're back into the realm of igneous rocks. But before we do, we get to this texture of migmatic texture and a type of rock that has mig a type of metamorphic rock that has migmatic texture is migmatite. Go figure. Here's a, a migmatite outcrop. You can kind of see the the veins, um, you know, going through this this rock type. Uh, and that's my foot. And this was over in the Australia mountains. Go figure. So we get some migmatite. So metamorphism bordering on too much heat and pressure too deep down. Uh, almost melting again. So let's go ahead and pause here. When we come back, we'll talk about metamorphic rocks. We talked about their texture, but now we'll talk about the rocks themselves. See you back here in just a second. <laughs> 